There we go. Session has is being recorded now. All right. Well, now that those of you watching the YouTube video missed out my explanation of what's going on, I'll summarize it real quick. Um, one, be sure to fill out your course evaluations. And two, we're going to talk about model of computation. And although it's a rather advanced topic, it is very foundational computer science. And I'm only going to talk about it at a very high level today. So computers are contrary to what people use in everyday life for when they when they say computer, they usually mean like this thing, you know, like your laptop, your phone, it's a computer, you know. We've got embedded computers everywhere. There's probably even little computers and vending machines these days, right? Computers are everywhere. And we've got a sense of what a computer is in our head. It's like the thing, you know, you can go on the internet with it, you can check email, whatever. But the problem is that's that's not a very good a, a very good uh, use of, it's a fine use of the word computer because it is a computer, but it gives the wrong impression of what a computer is. A computer is a thing that is capable of computing, of performing computation. It's capable of getting input, producing output, kind of remembering what state it's in and depending on the state, you know, how it can operate. And again, this is all going to be very high level. So if at the end of this, you're thinking like, wait, so what's the point? The point is there's different levels of computers. And I can talk about like the capabilities of certain types of computers, the power of certain types of computers. And when I say that, I don't mean that, oh, my laptop has a faster processor than yours. I don't mean that I have more RAM than you. That's not what I mean. I mean, there are systems and models of, com of computation of computers, computing devices that are just completely different and are capable of doing, doing some things, but not other things. And more powerful forms are capable of doing everything that the less powerful can do, but that much more stuff and so on and so on and so on. And okay, from here, let's just move on to talk a little bit about the finite state machine the most basic simple form of computation we're going to talk about today, or pardon me, uh, com computing device that we're going to talk about today. I will encourage you for this lecture to, one, follow along with the slides. I'll share my screen as well, but follow along with your, you know, on your computer. <laughs> and at the same time, I really would encourage you to grab a sheet of paper and a pencil because it's, it's with the sheet of paper and a pencil that you'll probably learn a little bit more. You'll get a sense of what's going on. And ultimately, you'll have more fun. As, as corny as that sounds, you will have more fun kind of like trying to work through some of the examples we're going to do. OK, let me share my screen. Uh, yeah, your entire screen. Share. Okie dokie. Uh, is it working? There we go. OK, okay. so. Models of computation, finite state machines, or finite state automata. This is a very simple model of computation. And we can define very, 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 very simple computers in terms of input, output, and states. And computer scientists love to geek out about this type of stuff. And we love to geek out about, like, well, what can this dumb little computer actually do? Because you might be surprised at all the little applications where this little dumb little computer we're going to talk about is very capable of doing that job. And I want to be very clear that the list I'm going to just bring up is in no way exhaustive. These things can do a lot, but they can't do everything. Some of the, like these finite state machines, these things that uh, fit this model of computation could like these finite state machines could work just fine on a vending machine, traffic lights, elevators, even like locks and safes, like digital ones and like, analog ones, like physical locks, are kind of like these finite state machines. And I actually, I, I really shouldn't even say kind of, they are. And there's another thing, regular expressions that, well, let's not go there. But let's say, for example, I've got a lock. Let, let's say it's a safe and it, it's a digital one, but it doesn't have to be. You can imagine it's one of those like, what are they, like the Dudley locks, you know, with that you spin. Imagine the lock has the combination 773, OK? So I can draw this finite state machine, this model of computation, like I did here in Microsoft Paint, that describes this lock perfectly.
perfectly. Okay, so first you'll see this circle here has an arrow pointing to it. This is our, our symbol to say that this is where we start. And you'll see far over on the right, we've got a circle with a circle in it. This is typically the symbol we use to mean like, okay, the final state, it's done. So let's look for a second. If someone comes along and we start at this state here, I, if I see the number seven, I can go to the next state. If I see the number seven again, I go to the next state. And then if I see the number three, I go to the next state. But of course, if at any point I don't see the correct number to get to the next state from a given state, I will just go back to the beginning. So this lock is just waiting to see the sequence seven, seven, three. In this situation, I guess I can see seven, four, seven, seven, two, 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 seven, seven, three, and then we get to the end because all it looks for is seven, seven, three. And then if we ever get to this last state, the lock unlocks. You can kind of think of this as like the actual physical lock. And depending on how the pins are set, you know, we've kind of got like those states. But this machine receives input knows what state it is in and produces an output. In our case, the output would be unlocking the safe or something. So do you see here how in order to get to the final state, I must get the sequence 773 in that specific order. If I don't, I will never get to that final state. Do we, do we see that? Is it like, we, we draw this graphically to describe this machine. We can also use a bunch of fancy mathematical symbols to describe this machine, but I like this graphical idea here. So this little description here it is a computer. It's a computer that receives input, knows what state it is, and then can produce output depending on what the input and the states are. That's it. It might seem really dumb, but it is. But despite being simple and dumb, it can do a lot. And these machines can easily be built that are way less powerful than, you know, these computers here, way less powerful, but still can solve a lot of problems in our daily life. And this is fantastic. Like we can build these devices electronically very easily to, you know, to solve problems. And this is fantastic. We can also kind of think of this the other way. So, Here's an example of a computing machine that, that says, okay, I, I'm looking for the sequence 773. If I don't get it, I, I, like, I won't unlock, but if I do, I do unlock. That, I drew this diagram to fit the sequence 773. But we can kind of go the other way, where imagine I start with a diagram and I ask you the question, what sequences can this machine accept? What I mean here is, in this example, let's say I've got an alphabet of A's and B's. I start here, and I want to end here. I don't really care how long this machine is, or pardon me, how long the input string is, but all that matters is I want to start here, and I want to get to B or B, I did not say that, pardon me. We want to start here and get to this state here. This is the final state. So the question I'm going to ask you right now is, what are the sequences that will get me there? And I'm going to give you a moment to crunch these numbers, crunch these letters. Ask yourself, what are the sequences? What do they look like? Can you kind of like generalize what the sequences must look like? I mean, if I asked you to look at this and enumerate all the possible sequences this could accept, I mean, you could start to do that, but I want you to look for the pattern and see if you can kind of like explain the pattern to me without having to enumerate all of the options. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes to do this. But before that, I suppose, do are there any questions before you start trying to scratch out what these sequences of letters would be. Any questions? Okay, so I'll assume you understand the problem. And given that, I want you to look at that machine and scratch out a bunch of examples of strings that this can accept. And then 
I'll ask and see if we can get uh, the generalization or see if we can kind of like figure out what those strings must look like. Okay, so I'll give you until like 1131 to, to do this. So have a look at that and just see what you get. Ah, I, I, one person responded to the evaluation in that section, and uh, no one responded in the other section. Which section is this? Well, what's going on here? Oh, I can't tell. I'll assume this section where the one person responded was the in-person section of the course. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Does anyone have any idea? And you don't even need to have the answer of what the generalization is. You can just start, like, like raise your hand if you have an idea. And I want you to tell me what, what some of the sequences you came up with are. All right, Jared, well, if, if you've got your mic, turn it on. Like, what, do, what did you see? What do you see? Isn't it just A, B, or B, A? Well, that's one of them. Or pardon me, those are two. Those strings absolutely are accepted by this machine. If you get the string A followed by a B, you're done. Or if you get the string B followed by an A, you're done. But those are only two. I'm going to give you a hint. There's a hell of a lot more than just two. But you're absolutely correct. That machine will accept those strings. Does anyone have any other strings to, uh, to suggest? You can turn on your mic and answer or just type it in the in the thing if you want. No one else. I thought I saw someone else's hand go up. So let's let's go back and look at that little machine there. So you were saying if we get an A followed by a B, we're done. Or if we get a B followed by an A, we're done. But you'll also notice, oh, oh, someone said something. A, A, B, you're absolutely right. A, A, B will be accepted. Do you have another, another guess? So we've got three strings, B, B, A, correct. Any other ones? A, B, A, ooh, I don't think so. I don't think so. Couldn't it accept any amount of A's followed by a B or any amount of B's followed by an A? Cole, you are 99.999999999% accurate. And somehow at the same time, 100% incorrect, but I'll come back to that in a moment. So it won't, I'm gonna modify what you said slightly. What you said, Cole, was so close to being correct that I'm just gonna modify it slightly. It's not that it could accept any amount of A's. It has to accept at least one A followed by some arbitrary number of A's, then a B, or at least one B followed by however many B's followed by an A. So you said uh, any amount of A's, it has to have at least one A and one B followed by a B or one B followed by an A. But I could have anywhere from one to many A's followed by a B and one to many B's followed by an A. So you're so close to being correct. So if I ask you, 
So that's like, you're absolutely correct with that modification. Now, let me ask you something. How many, you, so this is, this is what's fun about this type of stuff. And this is where people start to go like, wait, what? <laughs> if I ask you, so right now, if we look at Jared's answer, he gave two, Shelby gave two. Uh, Alexander Spark tried one, but that's, it's not correct. But I like what you're thinking though. The reason we can't have ABA is because once we get an A followed by a B, we're at the final state and the final state doesn't receive any more input. But the Cole's on the right track. So B signals the end of the input. Yeah, base, yeah, effectively, yeah, because that gets us to the final state and then it's not gonna accept any more inputs. Like, yeah, you're, you're right there. If I could modify it though, Alex, if I had it so there were arrows pointing back, like from the final state back to the final state that had like a B or an A or something, then I could uh, like have something like ABA by some arbitrary number. But because there isn't whatever, we get to the end and we're done. It's just the way it is. And you're not crazy for thinking ABA because, I mean, this is the first time you've seen these things and I'm telling you how they work now. But let's get back to the question. We have identified a number of strings that this can accept. And I'm going to ask the question, how many are there? How many different unique strings can this machine accept? And I'll give you a minute to think about it. But as soon as you think you have an answer, just type it in the chat. Infinite. You're absolutely right. And I mean, it's, it's easy to prove. Like imagine you've got a list of everything that you were asserting, okay, I've, I've included all of them. Well, here, uh, take one of those and add, and add a, uh, what the heck? Um, take one of those, the ones with the most A's followed by B and just add another A in the chunk of A's and there you go, you're good to go. So. Yeah, we've got an infinite number of strings, which is weird because like this machine can accept a string that is infinitely long, which I don't know about you. I start to think like, well, that's, I mean, that's, that's like, that doesn't exist, but it could, which is funny, right? So there, are there any questions about these little finite state machines before we move on to the next guys? All right, hearing nothing, I will move on. But if you think of one, just type in the chat or raise your hand or something and I'll, I'll come answer it. So let's go have a look. So there we go, finite state machines. So yeah, computer scientists like to think about what else can a computer this powerful do? And there's a bunch of things. So let's move to like the next powerful level, the push down automaton. And actually, I, I need to be very careful with what I'm saying here. Everything I say today should be considered very high level. There's a lot of detail that I'm not going into. And when I say the next level of power is these push down automata, that's not really correct. But it's like the next big shift, let's say, for lack of a better term. There are a bunch of different things kind of in between, but let's talk about these things called push down automata or context free grammars. And we'll focus on context free grammars because they're kind of like, you'll see. So finite state machines are cool and all, but they can only solve certain types of problems. And we want to solve more complex types of problems, for lack of a better term. And these pushdown automatas are more powerful computational models. They can solve strictly more problems than finite state machines can. More complex ones. And anything a finite state machine can do, a PDA can do. But there are a lot of things PDAs can do that finite state machines cannot. Now, I am... You, you'll, I'll, you do have to note here that when I talk about like more complex problems, I'm kind of using like the strings themselves to represent problems and complexity as well, which might seem weird, but I think you'll get the idea as we look at this next one on what I mean about like complexity. So here is a PDA uh, we'll call it the context-free grammar. 
And this one will do the exact same thing as the second finite state machine. So this finite state machine, how it'll accept one A followed by some arbitrary number of A's followed by B or the same thing with B's. This thing right here is a description of this context-free grammar that does the same thing. So here's how it works. The uppercase letters are like, they're, they're very special symbols. They are not actual letters in the string, okay? They're symbols. So only the lowercase letters are the, the letters in the string. So the uppercase ones, they're not a part of the string. And we actually, if we ever have a string that contains any of these uppercases, it's not valid yet. We need to be left, once we're done, we need to be left with only like the lowercase letters. Uh, if we go down here, there's also a something called like an epsilon. That's just a fancy symbol of like replace with nothing. But more on that in one moment. So what we do is we will replace. Whenever we see an uppercase letter, we have a choice. We can replace it with anything, any of the rules where the left-hand side has that matching uppercase letter. So here I see an A. I can replace with this or this. If I have this, I've got an uppercase B. I can replace with this or this. That's it. The only other catch is this S. S is like our starting thing. Whenever we start, we start with an uppercase S. That's it. So let's have a look. I'm going to open up Paint. Yep. And here we go. Uh, let's make sure I am sharing my screen. Okay, good. So I start with S. Okay, so now I have a choice. I see an uppercase S. And I've got a choice to make. I can either take the first rule or the second rule. So the first rule is lowercase a, uppercase a. And the next one is lowercase b, uppercase b. So let's see. Well, let's go with the first one. I'm going to replace the s with a, you know what, I guess I'll, I'll use different letters or different colors to kind of represent things. So we've got the lowercase a and then an uppercase Okay, so now I've got the string A with this fancy symbol, and I've got a choice to make. I can either take this rule here or this rule here. But for the fun of it, let's take the first rule. So I'm going to replace that A with, so we've got the A still, and I'm replacing this bit here with an A and an uppercase A. So like this turned into this. There. And now I've got the A again. So OK, let's replace that A with that first rule again, the uh, AA. So we've got the first two A's out front. And then I want to replace this guy here with an A followed by the big A. And let's do it one more time just for fun. So now we've got A, 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 and then this becomes A, A. Fantastic. And then finally, let's go with the, the second A rule where we replace this A with A, B. So now we have A, 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 Done. Great. I mean, we can keep doing this. I mean, imagine I start with S, and then I replace it with, uh, I guess, the AA. OK, so that becomes AA. And then I replace that with the second rule this time. So I guess I get AB. And then, you know, I can kind of go the other way, too, where maybe I start with the B. So, okay, or sorry, the rule that gives us the B, so we get B, B, and then, okay, I guess let's, let's apply the first B rule, okay, so we get uh, B, 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 and then let's apply the second B rule, B, B, A, and we're done. I mean, I can keep going, in fact, I mean, this is the same as the second finite state machine we looked at. It'll give us an infinite number 
of possible strings that this machine can generate or accept, whatever we want to say. And you'll see that it has to be an A, at least an arbitrary number of A's, but there must be at least one, followed by a B, or an arbitrary number of B's, but at least one, followed by an A. There we go. Great. So let's clear this. And let's go down. So this is just me working. Through it. Okay, great. So what strings? Okay, great. I already spoiled the fun. Ah, wait, no, here we go. Here's another one. Here's another one. Epsilon means empty string. So this means like if I had an S, which is A, S, A, I replace the S with Epsilon. That means the final string is just A, A. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to give you until 1148 to try to see if you can find out what the rules are here. What are the types of strings this can generate? So I'll give you a couple minutes, see if you can figure that one out. I guess I'll stay here so you can have a look at it. And then we'll talk about it. So I want you to actually try, and then we'll talk about what we, uh, what we can come up with. Okay. Does anyone have any idea? Or at the very least, tell me a couple of the strings that you are capable of generating. And then we'll see if we can generalize it together. You can type in the chat, turn on your mic, talk, whatever, I don't really care. Just, just tell me. Well, I'm not seeing anything coming in, which is a little concerning. Was there any questions about what you were to do? Hmm. Okay, uh, I suppose we'll do this together, but it's a little, it's too bad that no one has any ideas. So I'll start sharing my screen again. So what we have here, we start with S. Whoop. And we have a choice to make. Do we go with A, S, A, or B, S, B? Let's go with the second one. Whoop. So we'll do B, S, B. And let's go with the second one again. B, 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 B. I'm just drawing the S last because of changing colors. So like 
this S kind of became the BSB. Let's apply the first one now. So we get S in the middle, B, B, A, A, B, B. Let's do the first one again. Nah, no, let's do the second one. So we get S, B, B, A, B, B, A, B, B. And then finally, I'll apply the last one, which is just, you know what, because I'm super lazy. What? Whoa, what is this? Back. There. There we go. So any, uh, do you see the pattern? Does anyone see the pattern here? And if you do, just type in the chat. I mean, here's one of the many possible strings. I'll give you a hint. There's literally an infinite number of these strings. But this is an example of one of the strings that we could generate. Anyone notice anything interesting about this string? Nothing, huh? A little too bad. Oh, what do we see? It's symmetrical. Yes, it is. Do we know the word we use to describe strings that are symmetrical? Same forward as it is backwards, for example? A palindrome. And don't ask me if that's the correct spelling, because I have no idea. A palindrome. So this context-free grammar can generate every possible even number length palindrome of A's and B's. It can generate every single one imaginable. These set of rules here, these very simple, simple, simple set of rules will generate every single possible infinite length palindrome of A's and B's as long as it's an even number. We could actually very easily modify this to also include the uh, odd length ones to just, we can add two more rules, replace S with a single A and then replace B or S with a single B. And that can also generate the even and odd length ones. But this is only even length palindromes, which is interesting. And what's particularly interesting about this is it is not possible to design a finite state machine that can do this. You can sit down and try, but you'll never be able to do it. It is, you could not build a computer based on the model of computation of finite state machine that can generate palindromes. You can't do it. Or at least you cannot do it for infinite length ones, which is interesting. So this machine can do more than the finite state machines. So let's look at this next one here, and I'll give you uh, until 11.55 to see if you can uh, figure out what this one does here. So you got about two minutes to see if you can get this one figured out. And of course, this is not correct anymore. There we go. One more vowel came in. Numbers are still pretty bad. So far, this, this is the lowest I've ever had. Hopefully they get better. There's only one day left. Ooh.
perhaps I'll cut you off now, even though it's before 11.55, but just for the sake of time, type in the chat if you think you found a couple strings, or the evaluation might take a bit to come in because I did mine before class. What? Oh, yeah, OK, whatever. <laughs> I The numbers have been increasing since, uh, like every time I hit refresh, they'll, they'll go up. So I, I think that it's, it's pretty quick because uh, I suspect others are doing evaluations. But anyways, uh, but back to context-free grammars. I was very confused by that message too. I was like, the evaluation of the context-free grammar is, but anyways, what are some strings you came up with? Or can anyone tell me the generalization? Can you describe to me what the strings will look like? It would exponentially grow for the first one. Yeah, I mean, that's that's true. It's a good observation. All right, let's let's work through this one here real quick. Okay, so if we start with an S, we can go to, uh, let's apply the first rule just for fun and see what happens. I mean, the choice of the rules I'm applying is somewhat arbitrary, S, S. Okay, and then let's apply uh, uh, the last rule to the first one to just get rid of that S. There, great. So now we just get S. Uh, now let's apply the second rule, okay? So we'll cross that out and we get bracket, bracket, oops, S. Then let's apply the first rule, because why not? So we get bracket, bracket, S, S. And let's apply the third rule, okay? So now we get bracket, 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 yes. And then let's apply the second rule. So we get bracket, 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 bracket. But then here we've got the S in here. And then let's, uh, I don't know, let's uh, apply the first rule again. So now we've got Bracket, bracket. Uh, ra raise your hand if you start to see a pattern here. Oh, uh oh, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, what do you think? What do you think? Feel free to unmute yourself or type it in the chat. So long as every bracket is properly closed, it's accepted. Absolutely. You're absolutely correct. This little machine can guarantee that you've got your matched open and closed brackets. It'll guarantee it, which is pretty cool, I think. And again, you cannot build a finite state machine to do the same thing. Which, again, I mean, you could sit down and try, but you'll never find it. Let me put it this way. If you do find it, that'll generate infinitely long ones, mind you. If you ever do find it, you will break the world and probably make a billion dollars through your genius, but you won't find it. So next, context-sensitive grammars. These are very, very similar to the last ones, but you'll notice that the rules apply some context. So we can only apply the rule here if we see, like we can only, pardon me, apply this rule 
if we see the A followed by the letter B. So up here, we didn't have the, that like context. We just saw like, okay, if we see an A, we can do something, A, we can do B, B, and whatnot. But down here, we've got context that matters. So, I mean, if I go with this, A, B, I can use this rule, but I can't use this rule because I don't have an A followed by a C. So I'm going to give you until 12.03 to try to figure this one out. And the, the lack of communication over the last one concerns me that maybe, you know, you're not going through the exercise, but I really do strongly encourage you to do this and see if you can find out the rules, like what the strings are, because it's fascinating. You can, and the cool thing is you can't use a context-free grammar to generate what this one can. This one is strictly more powerful. And if you absolutely cannot use a finite state machine. So this one is even more interesting. And a context-free grammar can't do it. You need context-sensitive grammars in order to generate these strings. So 12.03, and then we'll see what people come up with. Do me a favor and raise your hand if you're scratching some ideas down. I want to see if people are actually doing it or not. Because if you are, we'll carry on. Otherwise, we'll just move on. <laughs> One person. Two people. OK, three. OK, good, good. Keep going. Okay. Any ideas? Feel free to type it in the chat or just unmute yourself and say it. See if we've got any ideas here. Is it a shorter? Is it a shorter? I'm not sure what that means. Is it a shorter? What's a shorter? Well, I'm, I'm not sure what a shorter is, but are there any other ideas? Like, what, what are we thinking here? Well, a lot of people are leaving, so maybe we'll I'll leave that as an exercise, see if you can figure it out, because it is a lot of fun, I think. But the thing I'll end with here is Turing machines. You may have heard of these before, but Turing machines are even more powerful models of computation, and more or less, it is this model of computation that all the computers we use today are based on. So all the ones, you know, your laptops, your phones, and everything, 
they're not based on the definition of the Turing machine, but they are they are as powerful as these Turing machines. They can do anything that our computers can do. They're fantastic. And it is in this area of computer science where we can start to get kind of philosophical, but not in like a like, whoa, dude kind of way, in a like, these are real things to talk about, is, you know, you are a computational system, your brain, you know, you do number crunching, input, output, states, you know, there's a lot going on. And one thing I do know is that you are at least as powerful as a Turing machine. I know that you can do anything a Turing machine can do. It's easy. But here's what I don't know. And here's what no one knows. No one knows if you can do more than a Turing machine. Are there certain things that you can do that a Turing machine can't? Maybe, but we don't actually know, which is, I don't know, crazy to me. I mean, I don't even know if there is a form of computation. When I, I, we, we don't even know if there is like a model of computation that is more powerful. Is there a model of computation more powerful than Turing machines? We don't know. We don't have a definition for it. Are we as powerful as that? We don't know. We don't have a definition for it. Additionally, if there was one, and let's say hypothetically, we, we are as powerful as a Turing machine, but not more powerful but there is a more powerful model. Would we even be capable of identifying it because we're not sufficiently powerful enough? I don't know. It's weird, right? But anyways, that's that. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, thanks for coming, the 10 people out of 100-ish. <laughs> uh, do note, office hours will still be running tomorrow, but it'll be the last one tomorrow. <laughs>